Hello? Hey, man. Chris? What's up, man? Hey, so I was looking for new guns to write about and came across the MP5 SD3 from WFC while on your website. So I figured I'd do some research. I know it's not the first MP5 GBBR that came out, so I gave RWTV a look to see if there was any video on it. And do you know the last MP5 video you guys did? It was about 10 years ago already. Oh, come on, get out of here. It can't be 10 years. Give me a second. Yeah, bro, 10 years. Huh, I see. But you know what that means, right? Dude, who are you talking to? It's time, high time for an MP5 review. And we're gonna do the MP5 SD3 GBBR. All right. All right. Ten years is a long time for anything, and seeing that the last time we did a video of an MP5 on this channel was ten years ago, <laughs> that's not good. That is uh, not good at all. But hey, leave it to the professional airsoft player to call me out on it, right? Let's get into it. The MP5 is definitely on that icon status and shares the same type of notoriety with guns such as the AK and the M16. Culturally, the MP5 is featured prominently in a lot of movies, but most prominently, it's probably Die Hard. Some would argue that the AUG stole the show, but that's an argument for another day. The SD though, the movie that stands out the most to me is the classic from Samuel L. Jackson and Kevin Spacey, The Negotiator. The gun was featured prominently in that movie, along with some other really cool firearms as well. That one to me is where this MP5 SD stood out the most. The Airsoft version, of course, as you would expect, is a faithful replica, and it uses an early type receiver, but more on this later. The gun is a Umarex gas blowback made by VFC. The fit and finish is what we have come to expect from Umarex licensed GBBRs, and everything looks pretty spot on. Now, I've been asked several times before, is this the same as the Elite Force H&K Airsoft guns? The answer is yes. This is also the Elite Force H&K MP5 SD3 GBBR. Wouldn't it be nice if we all just had the same name across the board? What a thought. The gun features HK style front and rear sights and of course the aforementioned metal collapsible stock. The lower here is a very nice high quality polymer and the magazine that comes with the gun is a 30 rounder. I quite like the design of the magazine as well as it has lips right here that looks like it's supposed to hold your rounds in. Very nice faithful replica of the magazine. Though the silhouette of the gun may be considered by some as traditional or classic, don't worry, you will still be able to mount red dots and hollow sights on this gun with the use of a low profile mount. I'm gonna show you guys how that looks in a little bit later when I shoot the gun. And I've also checked with VFC that the Toker Marui claw mount should also be able to work with this gun as well. Don't worry, we got you all covered, guys. Internally, the gun is an upgrade over the one that came out years ago, and it's built upon the later success of the Umarex SMG line, such as the UMP9. Some notable internal upgrades include a high flow piston, redesigned magazine internals, which translate to better gas efficiency, higher felt recoil, and easier repairs. Taking this one step further, the gun is also compatible with a few G3 parts as well. Namely, the steel hammer, steel trigger, and steel trigger sears. Now I want to get back to something I mentioned a little earlier. This is considered an early version of the MP5 SD3. And that is because it uses a different lower receiver and a fire selector group. This is using the SEF group. A little bit easier for you guys to see, like this. Now. Here is Gambit's MP5 SD. Now if you come a little closer, I'm gonna show you the differences. On Gambit's gun, it uses the more currently and easily recognizable Navy group, on the bottom here. 
whereas this one uses S, E, and F, the A3 style group. Now, S, E, and F, what does that mean? It's German, believe it or not, and I'm about to say it, and it is Sicher, Einzelfeuer, and Feuerstoß. Everybody knows that. You haven't hung up yet? What have you been doing? You just, you know what? Whatever. I'm gonna... So now that we know that SCF stands for safe, semi, and auto, this gun doesn't have burst. Now, while you guys may think, oh, who's still using this? Well, there are still several militaries out there and law enforcement agencies that still use this specific group. Most notably, the German police still use this A3 style group. And there are some benefits of using this. For starters, the selector is a little bit bigger, so you're gonna be able to get on it easier than the Navy group or other ones that use that smaller HK style selector. The second thing is it feels a little bit more stiff and has a very positive feedback when you select your different firing modes. This kind of gives you a little bit more confidence going into situations where you won't feel like, am I gonna get off of this firing mode? So I do see a good amount of merit to the old A3 style SCF group. With the chamber open, you guys know what time it is. It's time to play Find the Hop Up. And you'd be right, it's right there in the chamber. It comes with a very long, thin Allen key. Stick it in there and you adjust the hop up. I didn't mean any of those in your windows. Hang on a second. Hey bro, it's me again. You can't keep calling me like this, man. I'm on camera. Just a question. Can you just... You know what I mean. Can you can you do it? You want me to what? Just one time, can you... Don't be shy. Come on, can you... Can you slap it? You want me to... Fine. Chris wants me to HK slap it. And you can do it. I'm using 0.2 gram BBs and green gas. So we're about to shoot the SD3 now. Before I shoot it though, here's a cool little fun fact for you guys. If you unscrew the tip of the suppressor, you'll find that the inner barrel actually comes all the way to the front. Outdoor aficionados, don't worry. The gun is gonna get a decent amount of distance and you're gonna get some pretty good accuracy. Start off with that semi-auto. When they said they're gonna deliver on a stronger recoil impulse, oh, they delivered. I mean, it's not as strong as say the UMP9 because there's less mass to this bolt, but it definitely feels harder kicking than the previous MP5s that they've made. And it's pretty accurate too. That was semi-auto and it was pretty fun. Let's dump the rest of this mag down range. Not bad. Okay, so that last MP5 video we did on our channel was legitimately 10 years old. If you wanna check that out, go click in the card above. In the card, you'll also find the link to the UMP9 video I did some time ago. Fantastic gun to shoot, lots of fun. Check that out, highly recommended. The MP5 has kind of been the measuring stick to which all SMGs have been measured by. No matter it be usability, ergonomics, or functionality, this MP5 platform has kind of been the gold standard to which all SMGs have strived to be. And this airsoft version we have here has paid faithful homage to said weapons platform. And for those who've been reserved about looking into one of these, I hope this video would shed some light on it. As we know, some previous gas blowback versions of the MP5 has been anything less than stellar. In the title of the video is called New, but is it improved? Now the gun aimed to deliver on a few things. First, it wanted to increase the flow of air out of this gun, making it a little bit more stable. 
Well, it certainly did feel like it had a little bit more stability when I shot it, especially on full auto. It felt a little bit more consistent, that's for sure. The other thing was it wanted to improve its ability to be repaired, make it a little bit easier to fix. That's yet to be seen. I don't think this new gun's gonna break anytime too soon. And the last thing, it really wanted to up its ante on the recoil impulse. That I can confirm. It really did kick a little harder, for sure. Overall, these things make a really nice package, but is it enough to convince you to pick up one of these SD3 GBBRs for your arsenal? I wanna know all that and more in the comments section below. And if you want cool products like this and many more, don't forget to check out our online store at www.redwolfairsoft.com. My name is Mark, aka Blue Steel, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Red Wolf TV. Have a good one, guys.